Hi, my name is Phoebe. Today we're gonna go through the new 2024 release. Everyone here at Clo Virtual Fashion has been working really hard to get you all of these exciting new features. We cannot wait to share them with you, so let's dive on in and have some fun while we learn. Before we even open up Clo, let's talk about some of the adjustments we've made to logins for individual users. Now, individual users only need one ID to gain access to everything Clo Virtual Fashion has to offer. So that includes MD, Clo, Closet, Connect, and Ginny. One ID to access them all. When logging into the website or the software, there have been changes to make sure that this one ID gives you access to everything everywhere. The main ID that will be used will be tied to Closet. Please know that doesn't mean you need to have a Closet account or you need to be using Closet for this ID to work. It's just the ID that's tying it all together. The software sign-in window will also have the option for you to use your Closet ID or you can use your ID to and password to just sign in. We have updated our UI a bit in this release to create a more uniform and standardized look within Clo. So here you see the previous 7.3 UI. And in the 2024.0 UI, not much has changed. We've only updated a few things. The top two is our color and font. We've just made those more standardized and uniformed along the way. Also, we've optimized our modular library to only one on the left side. Along with the left side in our library, we've updated those download icons. We've also updated our Clo project file icons within the computer to make selecting the correct project file even easier. Along with updating our toggle menus to be easier for visibility and use, so instead of our horizontal drop down, it's now vertical. And we've updated our tool images in the object browser for a refreshed look. Going back to our modular update, now when you bring in a file that was part of the older modular library, a pop-up window will come up. This tells you that it, Clo acknowledges that there was an older modular file in Clo, but it is not saved in the modular library. You still have to go through and save it out where you'd want it to be in your modular library. Also, we've made it possible to decide where all of your new modular files should automatically be saved within your user settings. Now you have the ability to export and import USD files. This is currently just for simulation file information, and we hope that this will lead to better file exchanges with more 3D softwares. And more updates will follow with the USD. Continuing with this seamless connection between our softwares and platforms, you now can go into the Connect library within Clo here and then bring in one of these new avatars, again from the Connect library, but it's inside of Clo, and seamlessly edit them with our avatar editor. This makes it easier to customize your avatars all within Clo. We have also improved our bounding volumes for multiple avatars, along with our arrangement points for our avatars. So as you can see, while having multiple avatars within a window, you can now have bond bounding volumes on all of them. You can also see that our arrangement points have been updated a bit. So our arrangement points are, are now linked to joints. So when you adjust the avatar pose or size, the arrangement points will seamlessly adjust with it. We now have the ability to change mesh type from triangle to quad optimized. When using this option, you'll be able to edit faster along with exporting smaller file sizes out and everything. You can now copy and replace pattern outlines. Simply edit and adjust one line, 
copy that line and replace its partner. There's multiple options when replacing the line with direction and flipping. All of this allows for faster and more efficient editing within Clo. Really exciting and fun. We also have updated our walk pattern tool, so it can now detect darts within a pattern. Note, it has to be a Clo dart, but it can adjust when you're walking the pattern to calculate for that dart and walk your pattern seamlessly. You can also now hide and show just the angles of a pattern. So you can hide and show the angles and still have the line lengths or just have the angles and no line lengths. All of the options are open to you. Holding down shift and selecting multiple curve points, you can now turn those into segment points with a simple click. We have updated our nesting algorithm for better consumption rates and everything, but we've also added the ability to set your own time for how long you want nesting to take within the settings tool. And you can also adjust between the actual print pattern size and the shrinkage or growth pattern size. In POMs, you can now view either your 3D line length or your 2D line length through just checking on this button. Using the edit graphic tool and right clicking on the graphic, you can then create these custom measurements from the graphic to any point in the pattern's outline. The measurements can be found in the property editor and this can be exported in the JSON files. Using the edit graphic tool again and right clicking on the graphic, you can trace as internal lines. You can now trace out graphics using internal lines. This can be used for multiple things, from creating graphic patches to helping in production workflows. You can even see some graphics here using this. In Clo, you can now get more realistic knitting than ever before. Changing your type to knitwear within the property editor will change out the mesh to a three-dimensional version. From there, you are able to adjust the knitting further. Different knit stitches will have 11 presets to use for now. You can also adjust your knits further through a gauge and yarn thickness. The higher the number for gauge, the more stitches per inch. The higher the number for yarn thickness, the chunkier the yarn is. You can keep adjusting this further by generating true knit seams or turning them off for a more cut and sew look. There's also now the ability to change out each ply color for a marled knit look, which is also really cool. You can see through these renders just how realistic this new knitting feature looks. Selecting the zipper puller in the property editor, you can now choose between one or two way zippers. There is bottom to bottom or head to head. Head to head is great for bags. As you can see, these zippers are still completely functional. So you can zip them up and down while also moving and adjusting the patterns. So this is also great for garments. Again, you can select the zipper puller, choose two way, and you will then have the option of bottom to bottom or head to head. I believe bottom to bottom best for garments. And also, as you can see, it's still completely functional. So you can zip and unzip to your heart's delight. If the trim is glued to a pattern, you can easily copy and paste that pattern within the 3D window and your trim will follow the pattern and it will stay glued to the pattern as well. When bringing in hard objects as scenes or props, you can turn on or off the collision of that object, allowing for the patterns within the window to drape on top of them or to drape without them even being there. You now have the ability to add in multiple wing controllers within the 3D window. You can choose which to activate and adjust each separately. You can now use this face swap feature that we partnered with Nuva for with all of our types of avatars. So boys, girls, men, women, everyone. The concept has stayed the same. So you can select a gender, select the age. You can then also select ethnicity. 
And then you have the option of writing in your own text prompt or having one randomly generated for you. You will then generate an image and all of these images that you generate can be found in your history. You can then go through and convert any of these images to the corresponding avatar's face, as you've been seeing here. And then use these images for renders and everything to get a more realistic look when you render out your garment for e-commerce or more. Within our render window, you can now choose to have a transparent background for animated or turntable renders. Just make sure they're saved as uh, GIFs or GIFs, not as a video, and you'll be golden. Thank you all so much for watching and for making it to the end, congrats. We hope you all enjoyed the new features. If you want to learn more, check out our YouTube page for in-depth tutorials. More are coming soon. And have fun building with Clo 2024. And again, thank you all so much for watching.